Hey there folks, Rinny MC here and welcome back to Gods of the Twilight. Thank you Uber Strategist for the code for the game. In chapter 4 and I believe there's only chapter 5 out now so we're, we're close to the end of the current early access. The last part, we were with Farco so we went to dinner and we basically got told nothing. That it's not time yet, I will tell you soon. It'll, we can't tell you much now, it's for your security. But Althea invited us, invited Farkas to her room to fall. So we're going to Althea. If you want to be wise, you should know how to ask and answer wisely. Tell your secret to one person, never to two. If everyone knows, if three people know. I had plopped down on the bed in my guest room. I'm not sure what I did today to make me so tired, but I am. Either way, now to see if Fargus will take my invitation to come by and chat. I didn't exactly tell him when to show up and maybe I should've? I guess I was hoping this would give him a fair chance to gauge when he can come over without calling too much attention. But will that even matter? The guards will see him regardless. <laughs> maybe I'm overthinking. No reason for a talk in here to stand out more than any other interaction between guests. Besides, I'm not planning to spill a bunch of sensitive information. As long as I don't talk about that magic stuff, I'm technically still doing it as Director Tolling said, so it should be fine. Right? I wouldn't want to jump right in and tell him he might have a role to play in Ragnarok. Anyway, the director, hmm, got to the point that such information needs to be handled carefully. Especially when dealing with potentially supernatural people. These government agencies, possibly Koskinen, they're the ones who know what he might actually be, so they'd have a better idea how to approach this topic. As much as I wish I could be in the loop about everything, I want to make a poorly informed decision and regret it. So, where to begin? Questions raised by what I learned from everyone tonight, I suppose. I'm trying to understand the motives of these assassins. I receive a notification. A message from Johannes? So, how did it go? Feel free to call if you're available. Normally you wouldn't initiate conversation with me unless it was a routine check-in. We had something official to report. He's finally letting his walls down a little. Should I call back now? I'm expecting Farkas, but who knows what might happen next and we'll get another chance. Yeah, let's do it. Our call is Start the call if I'm gonna do it now. Farkas could show up any minute. Ah, thanks for getting back to me. I wasn't sure how busy you might be. There's plenty going on, but I have at least a few minutes. Well, I'm sure you already know what I want to ask. What's your impression of your host? <sighs> He's hiding something and I don't like it. On the outside, he was pleasant enough. But there's something going on underneath, which I don't entirely trust. And there's definitely tension between him and his son, who implied that his father ignores him most of the time. Sorry, between him and who? You cut out again. Ah, it's not going to let me mention the other guests, is it? There was also a strange look he gave for, uh, another guest. And I'm not sure I can explain it. But there's definitely more going on than he's telling us. Well, we expected secrets. But the feelings you picked up on mean something as well. Being with someone in person provides a lot of data we can't get otherwise. I also learned that he likes his privacy. I asked him directly about himself at the end, and I'm realizing he told me nothing, except that he's glad people know so little about it. So he actually... <laughs> I cut off Althea saying, Em, I'm sorry. What's so funny? Just the irony. He enjoys the luxury of privacy when he's in the business of taking away everyone else's. There's a knock at my door. I might need to go. I was planning to meet up with someone. All right. Good night, then. Good to hear from you, and thank you for indulging my curiosity. I nod back to him as the call ends and head over to answer the door. Wait, I just got the... Achievement. Check in with Gohanas consistently through Chapter 5. I wonder if that's just... Up until chapter 5, I have to check in constantly, and I guess that's the last check in. Because the next chapter is presumably Farkas. Okay. It's Farkas, sure enough. Hey, come on in. 
So I guess you decided to start carrying your chain around after all. Hmm? Oh, yeah. It's uh, better safe than sorry, right? Well, feel free to sit down. There aren't many places to sit other than the bed, so I gesture toward it. Glances in that direction. If that's fine with you, then... It's over to sit down at one corner. For someone with such tension under the surface, he sure is self-conscious. I sit next to him along the side of the bed. So, Hector said you used that chain against the assassins, right? I'm curious how that worked. It really does just look like a normal chain. That's because it is. I don't know what to tell you, honestly. It just worked. Besides, I'm curious about a lot of things myself. I mean, wh what do you know about these assassins? When I met Sara and Hector earlier, they told me a bit about what happened to you. How Hector was stabbed and it seemed like they were targeting you. There was an assassin who came after me too. Oh, maybe more than one. Police scooped me up before they could get me, but... One of my friends was killed while they were hunting me. When I first saw them, I assumed it was some well-supplied gang. High-end armor, some kind of tech blade. I didn't think I could possibly be the target, but they came straight for me. I thought the same, but then Eric said that there's something else. Apparently they've been around for generations and call themselves the Einherjar. More of a cult than a gang, it sounded like. I must have given a strange look at that because he raises an eyebrow at me. What? Einherjar? Those aren't assassins. Those are the heroes who feast and train in Valhalla in preparation for Ragnarok. They're the good guys. They fight alongside Odin. I mean, yeah. These people obviously think they're heroes. For a moment, I'm distracted by my own thoughts. This seems to completely contradict the director's theory that the assassins are agents of Loki. The director and Mr. Koskin are supposedly allies. Why would they have such different theories on who these assassins are? In Herjar. We're not on the wrong side, are we? Well, wrong. Norse mythology isn't exactly good versus evil in the first place. Even Odin has a nickname that literally means evildoer. You just randomly know all this mythology stuff? Uh, mythology has always been a hobby of mine. Hmm. He turns the chain around his hands, thinking. And yet, somehow that chain was enough to fend them off. Not just fend them off. We beat them. I beat them. They were on the ground, and I could have killed them, but I didn't. He speaks slowly and carefully, as if unsure of something. You won? But... These people are superhuman, whether it's their gear or, or whatever it might be. What do you mean? What else could it be? He's still examining the chain in his hands. Uh, well, I mean, apparently, if you manage to beat them, there must be special advantages one can have without gear. He shakes his head. Special, yeah, maybe. I keep wondering about that, but I don't understand it. Plus, it's mostly a blur. The first time I fought them, I completely blacked out. I don't remember what I did. I just woke up one day with no memories of the night before, a cut on my hand, and a feeling like I'd been beat up. You fought them multiple times? Yeah. I mean, I might not remember seeing them the first time, but at this point, I don't know what else it could have been. He holds his hand up and looks at it, and I can see a slight mark there, already fading. You and that Jane have been through a lot. Yeah. He pauses, considering something. There's something weird about it. Weird? Yeah, it, um, sometimes it's not where I think I left it. Like with the assassins, we were coming home from school, and I, I can't have it with me there, but when I needed to fight... There it was. And here too, in my room. Makes a vague gesture toward the hallway. I wonder if I'm still blacking out and not remembering when I do things with it. Well, 
The assassins definitely aren't just in your mind, so who knows what else is going on. But if Koskinen mentioned the Einherjar to you, I wonder why he couldn't explain as much to all of us. Yeah, he's, uh... I've had a strange feeling about him too, from the beginning. I mean, you don't keep a gun on you at all times unless you expect to use it. Yeah, I learned about that from the guards. Carrying concealed firearms into cities as a civilian? And legally? I didn't even think that was possible. Legally? Wasn't sure he'd care about that, but okay. Anyway, I wouldn't have expected Einherjar to look so... stealthy. Dressed in black, faces covered. Though the mask had a skull on it, and the Einherjar are supposed to be fallen warriors, so... Were yours like that too? Skull masks? They didn't have anything on their heads at all. They were just trying to look like Vikings. Glowing runes on their blades, furs over exo-armor, and that stupid side-shave haircut you see on half the punks these days. I don't think Vikings even did that. I don't know, I think it looks alright. He just looks at me. Uh, anyway, that's different. Still high-end gear, but different. So what? I guess they don't all have the same uniform, but the bottom line is, it's a really well-supplied cult. Just... well-supplied for what? Hunting down random teenagers? They clearly associate themselves with certain legends, so it may have to do with that. Yeah, that's what a cult is, right? They're fanatics about... something. And maybe in their minds it has something to do with Valhalla, but... What the hell does that have to do with us? Hmm. Starting to run into a wall. If I share my speculations beyond this point, I'll end up giving away the secrets I was explicitly told not to share about Ragnarok and reincarnated gods. It's looking at this like any reasonable person would, at least until they see the extraordinary for themselves. No point trying to convince him of anything with words alone. Besides, even I don't know for sure what the real explanations are. There are definitely more questions than answers. So, this might sound strange, but have you had any weird dreams lately? Dreams? I can't help but think back to the unusually vivid dreams of my first night in the underground base. But then also... Even the night before that, I woke up from something particularly intense. I think I was killed. Actually, there have been a couple. You too? He nods slowly. It was almost like different parts of the same story. The dreams I'm thinking of. A battlefield and something about being a nun. The unusual thing about them was how clear and solid it all seemed. That's a lot more detailed than mine were. There wasn't a clear scene, just a feeling. Or feelings. Normally I see things when I dream, but this was just darkness, even though it seemed very strong and real. Hmm. What do you think it is? I mean, all of this. If I really answer that, I'll be spilling everything about the supernatural side of the story. Not knowing how he might take it, or what his role might turn out to be. Pauling told me to limit what I share because if someone learns too much too soon, they may respond poorly. It'll be too weird for them if they get confused, angry, scared, distressful. And it's harder to work together. Even if Farkas needs to find out eventually, is it wise to do this now and for me to be the one handling it when I know so little? He already doesn't seem too keen on believing this type of thing. And again, if he distrusts me, that could screw us over as well. I don't want to keep secrets that might be important for our survival. Oh gosh, this feels like a major choice. Do we tell him or not? We're sharing it! Well, there's a bit more to this than meets the eye. Special forces have been guarding me ever since they found me running from that assassin. And they explained a bit about what they think makes me special. And it's strange, but it sounds like you've had some unusual stuff happen to you with your chain, so 
Maybe it won't sound as impossible as it would otherwise. I stand and head over to the closet, or head toward the closet, where I've kept a small room cover box buried in my bag leaning against the wall. Take it back out and set it on a side table. Farkas scoots around for a closer look. This was the first thing they showed me I could do to help me start taking it all seriously. A box? Apparently, this group, it isn't just Icelandic special forces or the government. They're collaborating with intelligence organizations around the world. And apparently for years, they've been looking into myths and what truth might be behind them. I don't know how they got started, but they wanted to keep an eye on anything that might affect national or international security. Okay, so what is this box, though? I go ahead and open it to show them the apple inside. I take it out and set it on the table next to the box, close the lid again, and open it again. Huh, some sort of magic trick? It looks between the apple I take it out and a new one now visible within. You'd think so, but in that case, where would another apple come from? A trick door? I don't know, you tell me. He peeks at the box and turns it around, taking out the new apple before closing and opening the box himself. Nothing new appears inside. Yeah, it doesn't work when I'm holding it, so the apple could have come from behind the table or something. What What does this have to do with anything? While well, he's still holding it, I reach out to take the lid from his hand and place it back on the box. <laughs> Remove it again, revealing another apple. Okay, I guess it's not a trick door then? Apparently it only works for me, because it's a relic made by a past version of me, more or less. That was their explanation. They say they've developed ways of tracking people with certain supernatural aspects to them. So they told you your magic power is making apples appear? <laughs> Sorry, it's just kind of... All right, you know what? I let out my frustration feel a burst of energy that builds in my core and then quickly release out my palm as I lift it towards Farkas. Completely unprepared, he tumbles backward off the bed and onto the floor, the box and the apple flying to the side. In this instant, he's back on his feet and his chain is already out and twirling his hand like he thinks I'm really attacking him. His eyes are determined, but I can see the fear in them. He's never seen anything like that before. I'm, I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to hurt you. That was more force than I intended. I'm still getting the hang of this. I just wanted to show you, you know, in a way that was clear. And I was getting a little frustrated, but I'm not your enemy. The fuck was that? My magic power is channeling some sort of energy. And I can use it to heal or I can use it to blast. And apparently this box can help me store that energy in physical form. Whatever, just don't fucking target me again. That's fair. I won't. Not unless you ask me to use it. To train with you or something. So what's up? An irritated breath, taking a moment to regain his composure. Channeling energy, huh? I mean, it's all pretty crazy, but I guess I'm glad you're not keeping it for me. His eyes trail off to the side and he suddenly laughs. <laughs> they stuck you in the room with the apple painting? Fucking egg. That guy's more of a troll than I thought. I took it as more of an I know everything about you, so don't try to fool me warning. Exactly. It's like... Hmm. What? I'm just thinking about the painting in my room. Why? What is it? It's kind of abstract, like a swirly design with a light in the middle. A tunnel, maybe? A cave? Hmm. His eyes split downward, glancing at the chain he brought with him. I'm not sure what your painting means if anything, but whatever strange things you've been experiencing with that chain, they might be related to your own supernatural aspects. God damn it. Why do I already feel like I know where this is going? In superhero movies, you always hear about the government trying to kidnap people with powers and turn them into weapons. And apparently the government is working with Eric and basically hosting us right now? I thought he wanted to protect his son after the attack, but... Did we step into a trap? <laughs> Wouldn't they be experimenting on us by now? And that doesn't explain the assassins. Who knows? They could turn around and strap us to lab tables at any time. Actually, how do we know Eric didn't hire the assassins and set this whole thing up? You can't just trust these people. 
higher then? You think he'd put his son through that on purpose? Who knows what these kinds of people are capable of? We need to be prepared. Let's talk through what we know first. The context will make things clearer. You said Koskinen called them Einherjar. The ones you faced, anyway. Everything about this situation ties back to Norse mythology one way or another. You can see the runes on this box, too. I pick up the box from where it fell when I pushed him, putting the apple inside and setting it to, on the nightstand next to the lid. As far as the box goes, they were saying it's because my past self was someone the myths were based on. The goddess Idun, who used apples to preserve the gods' youth and allow them to live indefinitely. He eyes the apple as if hesitating. Is he thinking about taking it? You can try the apple if you want. I've had them myself. It won't do much unless you're old enough that you'd look younger afterward, but I've seen it work on someone who was, believe it or not. So you're saying you're some sort of god? And that's why cultists are after you? Well, a being who can do unusual things. And maybe you are too. How do you define a god, anyway? Humans often deify things they don't understand. And yes, that's why I'm a target. But I don't remember anything other than the human life I'm living now, aside from a couple dreams. And apparently there are even parts of this life that I've blanked out. The same as you. So I trail off to the side, I was so distracted. So, what are you thinking? I mean, is this mythological bullshit gonna help us take down the people who attacked us? Or help us protect ourselves from getting our asses probed by the government or whatever the fuck they have planned? Because that's what I want to talk about. I mean, having superpowers can definitely help with those things, but does that mean you believe me? Do you agree that this whole Norse gods scenario is at least possible and worth thinking about? I have no idea. I guess in a way it sort of fits, but I don't know how this could work. Like not all these myths can be true. We know the world isn't a giant tree. The earth is round, goes around the sun. He trails off. I don't know. People build legends based on things they've experienced or heard, but they can only describe it in terms of what they know. If someone had a vision of a bunch of interconnected planes of existence, they might have described them as connected by the branches or roots of a tree. Or maybe that part is completely made up and it's only the other parts that are based on a reality. His mind is going somewhere else, isn't it? Right. He's probably more worried about his friends than about my theories on the metaphysics. The important thing is, you and I have abilities. There are people coming after us because of it. And, well, there are other legends that these government intelligence people think are true as well. Like what? The world has been stuck in winter for years now, and clouds cover the sun all year round. It seems normal now, but... It's not how it used to be. And it lines up with old descriptions of the years leading into Ragnarok. You're saying they think, what, that literally Loki and a bunch of fire giants are about to show up and burn everything? I don't know exactly what Ragnarok would look like if it happened, but they want to make sure it doesn't. And if it's the final battle between Loki's allies and the gods, we need to find those beings and stop them before they attack and wreck all nine worlds, including Midgard, our world. That's also why they said they thought the assassin who attacked me must have been working for Loki. But the assassin's after me. Right, the Einherjar. It's possible Koskinen and the government have different theories about the same assassins. He sounded pretty confident. So did they. So what, a war between two cults and we're caught in the middle? That's one possibility. And if so, are those cults trying to turn us against each other? Fuck 
both of them were not siding with any cult. I can't say I'm a fan of them either, though I almost wish I could talk to them. Without dying, of course. I want to find out what they're actually after. I'm not saying we'll be able to make peace, but I still want to know what they know. Well, honestly, I don't care. Whether it's one group, two groups, Valhalla, Helheim, regular criminals. All I know is if someone attacks me or my friends, I need to stop them. That's all there is to it. He has a history of choosing to protect. And if they keep coming, then we keep fighting. It doesn't matter what they're called or who they work for. And if this chain is some sort of divine power, then all the better to beat them with. Right. I was thinking again of my parents, Johannes, my classmates, including poor Pieta. What? What? Why am I? I hope they're all safe. The ones who aren't here. Yeah. You have family in the city too? Well, there's the woman who raised me. She's not my mother, but yeah. The woman who raised him? So he's adopted then. Now I feel bad for phrasing my question like that. Either way, we'll just have to be ready to face whatever they might throw at us. Hopefully, whatever we can do will be enough. You've gotta have more confidence than that. If we want to beat this, then we have to say we're going to beat it. Right. Of course. It's embarrassing that I seem weak enough to need that encouragement, but it's also nice that he's trying to help. But... When he talks about protecting his friends, I can sense the intensity of his determination, and it's like I'm only seeing the tip of the iceberg. How deep does it go? Encouraging. You know, the more I hear you talk about this, the harder it is to imagine us failing. You're so intense, it's contagious. Some things are too important to give up, so long as you're still alive and able to fight. Victory of Valhalla? <laughs> you could say that. But if it earns me a place with these Einharjar, they can keep it. So, what's next? I don't feel great about sitting back and letting the authorities take care of everything. What about training? How did you get better at your powers? Mostly, paying attention to my dreams. Especially the ones that feel... different and trying to copy whatever my dream self did to use them. Great, because my dreams are telling me jack fuck. Except maybe how to sit in a dark void and feel like shit. If you're like me, it'll get clearer. My dreams weren't always like this. Hmm, we'll see. Guess I'll just stick to a punching bag in the meantime. I've been doing self-defense training with Komani, you know, so we can spar as well. Um, uh, are you sure? I don't really spar, so I'm not used to holding back. And you definitely don't want to spar with a chain. This thing can really hurt. Maybe if I put a tennis ball on the end of a string or something. But if your powers have something to do with the chain, you'd need to use it if you're going to practice them, right? He shrugs. I mean... You said you could heal, so are you fine healing your own broken bones every time? Because that's basically how this works. Uh, good point. <laughs> I'll think about it. We can find other ways to prepare too. I'm not sure what we can do. We don't have a clear goal other than waiting for them to tell us more. That's why I wanted to find information on my own, by talking to you. Let's keep at it then. Dig up everything we can. You mean, what, poking around this house for clues? You think something like that would be lying around where we can find it? You have a better idea? The whole story has to be around here somewhere. It might not be lying on a shelf, but there have to be people who know more than we do, even if they don't know everything. You're talking about asking around. That might not go so well, and it called too much attention, but... Whatever the authorities are planning, they've got to talk about it at some point, right? Maybe we can overhear something. Maybe. We should definitely stay alert and keep track of anything we notice. Though, 
I wish there were more I could do than just wait for some clue to cross my path. I need to clear my head after this anyway. I'll probably go for a walk. It's night, so whoever's around won't expect to see guests. So who knows? Maybe I'll catch something they didn't think we'd notice. Sounds like a long shot, but I'm feeling kind of restless too. I guess it couldn't hurt, right? Though, if the idea is not to be noticed, we should probably split up. Right. Sticking together is best if you expect a fight, but stealth is best alone. Well then, I guess I'll see you in the morning if I don't catch you again tonight. And, uh, good hunting. He knows as we head back to the door. Same. As we step out, he gives me a brief wave as he turns down the corridor. I shut the door behind me and make my way in the opposite direction. I take different turns than I did on my previous walks through the place, getting as familiar as I can with the layout if nothing else. Up ahead, there's a little lounge to, my, to the left and I slow my pace as I notice voices coming from inside. It may or may not be anything too interesting, but it doesn't hurt to practice being discreet. You got some good star units. I'd say you can stop re-rolling. So many SSRs. I hope it was worth it. So now I start training them? Exactly. So, which Gatlinger will you level first? Remember, you have limited resources. Maybe the white-haired ballerina? I looked up a tier list and I saw that she... No, don't think like that. Don't focus on the meta, just pick the girls you like. That's who you'll enjoy playing with. The girls I... like? Yeah, whether it's personality or because she's cute or because you want to marry her. Just pick your favourite characters. Level those. Look, you might enjoy being a casual, but if I'm playing, I'm doing it to win. Yeah, but this isn't the sort of game you normally play, right? Just trust me and try it. You'll be able to win plenty, even if you do something sub-optimal for fun. In Hunter's Gambit, I'm definitely no casual. But in Gatling Girls, it's not about clearing content or high scores. It's about collecting cute characters. Then maybe... This one, with the long black hair. Oh, she looks a bit like someone I know. I don't know what you're talking about. Good to know, but no need to make Komani uncomfortable by popping out right after overhearing that. I'll just go back down the other hallway. It kind of turns out Hector guessed right with his teasing. I know how much she loves keeping professional distance. It'd take a lot for her to actually open up about feelings like that. As I continue my walk, the house is mostly peaceful. Ask guards at each balcony and exit as usual, but other than that, there's really no one around. But then, as I'm coming around the corner, I catch a glimpse of tan fabric disappearing up the stairs that lead to the roof pool. The only outfit I've seen the only outfit I've seen today that looks anything like that is Koskinen's. He's going to the pool right now? Remember at dinner, he mentioned I could speak privately to him or the guards if I had specific concerns. I wonder if there's more he can share if I'm the only one there. Worth taking a look at least and seeing if he can talk. I make my way up the stairs towards the door leading out to the pool. The window nearby lets in a fresh breeze and I glance out to see that it is in fact him. His back is to me as he walks toward a hammock at one end of the pool. He slides his jacket off and hangs it on one of the pegs supporting the hammock. With his jacket gone, it's plain to see the pistol in the holster under one arm. I knew to expect it after talking to the guards, but it's still strange to see that on someone without a uniform. Then, in a movement that reminds me of a tree swaying and dramatically collapsing onto the forest floor, he tumbles onto, into the hammock and lies on his back, his long legs hanging off the edges to either side. It's such a shamelessly undignified display that I can't help but smile. So this is what it looks like when he's actually relaxed. But that also makes me hesitate. It feels rude to bother someone who looks so tired, but still, how many chances will I get? As I hesitate, I hear him start talking. I can barely make out the words through the open window, so he's definitely not addressing me. He hasn't given any indication that he's noticed me at all, so a phone call? That's an irritated sigh and then composed himself, pulling, pulling his feet up into the hammock. Yes. We need an update. Will you... Are you in a hammock right now? Now there's a familiar voice. Does he not realize his phone speaker is on? His eyelids are drooping and looks about ready to pass out. The sound from the speaker is quiet, but my own earpiece adjusts its gain to help me make out the words. 
I just got back after 36 straight hours working on this operation. So sue me. Explains the fatigue. But it's looking like a worse and worse time to just walk out and say hi. It also sounds like a golden opportunity for eavesdropping, but is it worth the risk of getting caught? I always say I assume that all seeing algorithms and physical security would find a way to stop me from overhearing anything I'm not truly not supposed to, but even then, it could seem rude to our host. But then again, I'm already here, so could I linger a little longer without making a big difference? Nope, oh, we're listening. I see. <clears throat> anyway, will your son be prepared to provide support? Don't count on it. He'll get there eventually. But this week, it's anyone's guess. We could have helped, you know. If you sent him over even now, we could... You could what? If you have some new relic to test, send it here. That's not what I mean. We... He's staying in my custody. And we're not discussing this again. It can go quite smoothly. When you have the right relics, it can. Otherwise, your experiments are more likely to produce a mess than anything useful. Speaking of which, you're looking quite... refreshed. You've been playing with the relics again, haven't you? Not at all. This was a demonstration to help one of our subjects accept the reality of her true nature. Subjects? Plural? I don't remember any others. The young man whose toe I healed seemed pretty awkward in the military setting, so I could imagine him being a civilian who got sucked into this, but... Wait. What did Kosuka then mean about experiments producing a mess? Now my imagination is going wild in the darkest ways to consider what might have happened to other subjects. <laughs> as if there's nothing in it for you. You tricky bastard. Did she have any idea what she was giving you? She came to understand. That was the point. I'd love to hear what your superiors think about you becoming a walking intelligence leak. Everyone who sees me in person is clear to know. Remotely, I can appear however I wish. Then why haven't I seen your face in the past couple weeks? Because the bureaucrats were still deciding how to handle your fuck up. Listen, I didn't call to discuss my appearance, but to assure you that my methods are effective and to urge you to reconsider. I said we aren't discussing this again, unless you have some new means of forcing my hand. If this operation fails... It won't. Is that all? It isn't. We also need you to head out to the site. There are several matters to sort out before tomorrow. Now? Yes. Now. He rubs his eyes with one hand. Fine. And that will be all. <sighs> That's an annoyed side as the call ends and raises his voice slightly as he says, What's that entertaining for you, Althea? He needs to lie on his back and I'm turning toward me. I can see you, you know. I can access any security camera from my heart. I've been watching you hiding behind that door the entire time. My blood runs cold. Perhaps I stayed a little too long. Flipping away. Finally backed my way down the stairs so I, so I can hear him chuckling behind me. <laughs> Fine. Have it your way. I don't trust him. Certainly doesn't seem concerned. I don't know if that's because I'm about to find out the consequences of my actions or because he has so much control over the situation, doesn't think it matters what I did. Either way, for now, I'm not sure what else to do except attempt to go to bed. Yeah. Wait. Either way, for now, I'm not sure what else to do except attempt to go to bed, hope it's the ladder? What? Where else am I going to go? I don't want to simply flee this place when something might still need to be done about Fenrir. Make my way back toward my room. I plan a process from tonight. I only hope I can get my mind to settle long enough to get some sleep. It's been a long day. And we're off to chapter 5 with Farkas, who I assume we're just going to follow on his walk. We're probably going to overhear something we're not supposed to. But, I really don't trust Eric Koskinen. I, I really don't. I just don't. But, we'll do chapter 5 next time, which I guess will be it for now until there's an update with 
next chapters. So, thank you for watching! If you enjoyed the video, consider liking, commenting, and or subscribing! If you really enjoyed it, consider supporting the channel. All support greatly helps for keeping content like this and more. I have links for that in the description below, along with links to me on social media. Well, thank you again for watching, and until next time, this is Rinium T signing out. Bye!